This video will review DNA replication, the process that makes a copy of a cell's entire set of DNA. The central dogma of molecular biology is the uniting theme of the next few lectures. It is a guiding conceptual framework that summarizes how all of the information needed to make a cell is coded, deciphered, and put into action. Essentially, it says that in general, information flows from DNA to RNA to protein. There are some exceptions, but they won't be covered at this time. The focus of this video is replication, which is the synthesis of DNA from DNA. Transcription and translation will be reviewed in later videos. After DNA is replicated, two double-stranded DNA molecules are produced. Each of these DNA molecules has one strand from the original DNA molecule. This method of DNA replication is called the semi-conservative mechanism. The video on this webpage has an excellent animation of DNA replication, which you should view at your own pace before continuing with the rest of this video. There are a few fundamental details about DNA replication that you should take from the video. First, it begins at regions of DNA called replication origins. Second, the overall growth of the new DNA strand is 5' to 3'. The leading strand is synthesized as a continuous chain. The lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously in pieces called Okazaki fragments. The most important enzymes in DNA replication are DNA helicase, which pulls the strands of the original DNA apart to grant access to other enzymes, DNA polymerase, which synthesizes the new strands by adding nucleotides, and primase, which adds the RNA primer that DNA polymerase needs to start replication. The steps of DNA replication that you just reviewed work perfectly fine in the middle of chromosomes, but what happens at the ends? The leading strand is synthesized continuously and can be extended to the end of the chromosome but each fragment of the lagging strand is synthesized in the opposite direction, and ultimately, there is nowhere for the RNA primer to be placed. The cell solution is to use an enzyme called telomerase, which uses its own inbuilt RNA primer to add a repetitive sequence to the ends of chromosomes. Telomeres are the repetitive sequences themselves and help protect against the loss of useful genetic information that can result if the lagging strand is never duplicated fully. DNA polymerase makes approximately one mistake in every 10 million nucleotides. This is often enough to cause lethal mutations. This is why the cell has DNA repair mechanisms. DNA polymerase itself has a nucleotide cutter called an exonuclease that works in the 3 to 5 prime direction. It is essentially a backspace key because it allows DNA polymerase to fix an incorrect base that it just added. The cell also has an excision repair system. It notices the physical deformation in DNA caused by a mismatched base, cuts it out, adds the correct nucleotide, and reseals the strand. But how does the cell tell the new incorrect strand from the old correct strand? Well, the old strand tends to be methylated, and the new strand has periodic breaks, or nicks. Our last topic is DNA packing. How does all of our DNA fit into the nucleus? For one, the cell uses proteins called histones that are essentially DNA spools. DNA wraps around them to avoid being tangled. Multiple histone DNA complexes pack into structures called nucleosomes. Several more layers of packing make chromatin, and the most condensed form of DNA is the chromosome.